around Atlanta, but basically now I work with the company uh, Fortune Johnson, a general contractor based out of Peachtree Corners, Georgia. And um, I am just glad and hope to make a positive influence and positive effect on the on this committee. And thank you everybody for welcoming me. Welcome. We look forward to working with you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, if everybody has reviewed the minutes, is there a motion or any changes that we need to discuss? Do I hear a motion? Move to, move to approve the minutes as presented. All right. Thank you, Frank. Is Jay, second? second. Thank you, Jay. All right. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposition. All right. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we'll hear from the finance department. Okay. And Priscilla, could you just give me one second to get your slides up, please? Sure. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So our expenditures to date are approximately 755 million and our collections are approximately 800 million, which is about 145 million over projection. Excellent. Um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask Priscilla? No questions? All right. I, I have a question. I'm sorry. I couldn't get it unmuted. Uh, okay. does, does this 2016 go through January of next year? It ends on December 31st of this year. So, but it is reported to us in January. Correct. I I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand your question. Our, our meeting will be in January, so that's when we will get the final numbers for yeah. it. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further questions about the finance report? All right. We will move along to Ackworth. All right, can everybody hear us okay? Yes. Um, yes. A little louder would be good. All right, my name is James Albright. I serve as the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Resources for the City of Ackworth. Uh, we uh, appreciate you giving us the opportunity to present today. Uh, today, we also have some of our city team in the room. In the case that you have any questions afterwards, we have our Deputy City Treasurer, Diane DeSanto. We have our Power and Public Works Director, Angie Luna, our Chief of Police, Wayne Denard, and our City Treasurer, Lenny Tisdale. So uh, we're going to kind of tell you where we're at on the SWAS project since we last reported to you back in November. We're kind of in a season of smaller projects in this report, but we're also going to cover three projects that are larger than are towards the end of our SWAS cycle and let you know where we're at there. So this first slide right here, this just gives you an overview. This is essentially the document that guides how we manage our SWAS program and how we track everything. Kind of a quick overview of this. On the left side, you can see the description and the title of the project. Next to it, you'll see the total project cost. Um, and as the question was asked earlier, and for clarification, from a city standpoint, our fiscal year is July 1 to June 30. So that's why you'll see seven columns here. To the left, you'll see six month actuals, and all the way to the right, you'll see uh, six months as well. But in those gray columns, the first five, those are actual expenses over the first uh, part of the SPA cycle for us. The blue and yellow are projections. The blue column is the current fiscal year that we're in, and that, those are the numbers that we project to be at by June 30 of this year. And then the yellow column is how we'll finish out the SPLOS cycle from July 1 until December 31st of this particular year. 
The number you want to kind of see down on the far right hand corner there, the seven hundred and forty five thousand uh, dollars are the is the amount that we project uh, based on if we meet our expenses and revenues there, uh, the excess collections that we'll have there. Next slide, please. Police software, we continue to make progress on a new integrated records management software that will help in data sharing and availability of important information. Next slide. Since the last meeting, we have purchased and outfitted four uh, Dodge Charger for student vehicles. Next slide. At the last uh, meeting, we reported that within our uh, jail improvements, we had completed the renovation of our flooring system and the painting. Uh, since that uh, last report, we have also replaced the glass within the facilities and the partitions as well. We currently are in the process of upgrading our video surveillance systems and our access control and locking systems within there. Next slide. Miscellaneous paving throughout our city. Uh, we have spent approximately $276,000 since our last meeting on these projects. These are just three examples in Southside Drive that was a milling and overlay and restriping. Lennon Street, we did some restriping there. And then Cowan Road was a combination of all of those, uh, especially the restriping that increased traffic flow and efficiency through that particular intersection. Next slide. We've spent $250,000 on stormwater repairs since our last meeting. That also includes the design work and professional fees related to that. Uh, this is a picture of one of our neighborhoods where we replaced a storm culvert. Next slide. We have spent $85,000 since the last meeting on sidewalk repairs throughout the city. That may have required replacement of certain sections but it also allowed us to use a polymer system that we have the ability to raise these sidewalks that they've settled to reduce any tripping hazards there. Next slide. So now we get into the final phase of our SPLOS program, and these are three larger programs that we have left. We have $1.5 million budgeted for this particular project. We have completed the public information process uh, or the public input process on this particular project. We are finished with design. We are preparing the big documents and we expect to issue a notice to proceed on this project in uh, September of the first week of September. Next slide. The final road project that we will have is Northside Drive. This is on the other side of the, our historic downtown uh, to give you some reference points there. We have $1.5 million budgeted for this particular project. Right now, we are in the process of uh, commissioning a survey, which is how we start the majority of our road projects so we can see what we're working with there. And in April, if you can click through, there's some pictures that there's about three pictures that will show you kind of the condition of the roadway right now and some of the challenges that we face there. Uh, it is in proximity to CSX right of way as well. Next slide. This is uh, our Cumble Park master plan. If you're familiar with the city of Ackworth, we do have Lake Ackworth, and this is the north shore of that property. Uh, the improvements that we want to do there as it relates to pavilions and group shelters. Uh, Cumble Park is located on federal property, which does create um, a process that we have to go through. Part of that process, if we want to make improvements, we have to develop a master plan first, which you can see the results of that master plan. The second phase is that we have to develop an environmental assessment based on the impacts of that particular uh, plan. So we are currently moving through that process and we're in the environmental phase. And as soon as we make it through uh, those approvals with the core engineers, we can start this project as well. We have half a million dollars budgeted for this particular project. Next slide. And in conclusion, uh, we go back to the spreadsheet and our 745 collections. Uh, really puts us in a position where we feel like we have a good buffer and uh, heading into these final three projects and being larger projects. We feel like in the big climate right now with uh, uh, supply chain disruption, material uh, price increases, it really puts us in a good uh, position to finish out these projects strong. So uh, we thank you for the opportunity to present to the committee today. And uh, if you have any questions for our team, we'll be glad to answer.
Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions they would like to ask about Ackworth? Uh, Alice, this is Frank Wigginton. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. on the uh, Lake Cobble Park or Cobble Park, whatever it is, is there any federal matching money there or any federal grants involved? It's pretty much a uh, Ackworth and, and a uh, Splash project. No, sir, this is a, an Ackworth and Sploss project. Right now, uh, we have not applied for or we don't have any available federal funds to match that. Good question. Thank you. This isn't Sploss related, but are y'all having your July 3rd festivities on Cobble Park this year? We are having our July 4th festivities. It will be on the actual holiday. That is on a Sunday this year, but we are moving forward with the, uh, the event. Great news. Any further questions for Aqua? All right, thank you so much. Next up, we'll hear from Smyrna. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Moore. I'm the city engineer for the city of Smyrna. Um, on behalf of the rest of the Smyrna team listed on this first slide, I'd like to thank you guys for the opportunity to present a brief status report of Smyrna's 2016 SPLOSS program. Uh, we'll start. The next slide is an, a big picture overview of the total budget. As you can see, it's almost 111 million. With 92 and a half of that uh, obligated to date and 68 of that spent to date. The next slide is just kind of an overview of, of the types of, of projects and associated costs with the majority of those costs associated with transportation projects. Four million of that uh, with parks and, and public safety. Uh, and the next slide is just a very brief, a kind of big picture overview. I, don't, I think we might have bypassed one there. Yeah, as it's a completed projects of 30 under construction one and uh, under design two. And as we proceed forward, we'll, we'll talk about those particular projects. The next slide is the big project in Smyrna, the Windy Hill Boulevard. Uh, the scope of that project is, is the construction of a boulevard from South Cobb Drive to Atlanta Road with the four express lanes. And this project is a joint project between the city of Smyrna and Cobb County. Uh, when we get questions about what's it going to look like at, at, the, at its final stage, we encourage people to view the website that's, um, that's tagged there, smyrnasplos.com. It gives you a, a great uh, overview, a flyover of what the project will look like once it's completed. Um, is that well, project is that project um, on schedule? It's currently uh, behind due to some utility conflicts. We are currently working with Baldwin, who is the GC, to uh, for options to get the project back on schedule. Uh, so right now we're still holding that uh, May 2023 schedule, but the progress okay. is slightly behind at this time. Okay. So the next slide is a project that is currently in the design and permitting phase. It is for Oakdale Road. Uh, Oakdale Road is a kind of one of those unique circumstances where portions of the road are within the city of Smyrna jurisdiction and portions of the road are within Cobb County. So we've been working with, with Cobb County on some of the design parameters and the permitting for uh, the construction there. The uh, improvements will consist of landscape medians and uh, RRFBs for enhanced pedestrian safety. Um, we'll also include some uh, improvements closer to South Cobb Drive at Oak Drive and Highland Parkway. The next slide highlights our resurfacing program, which is uh, one of those um, programs that are really uh, important to the citizens of Smyrna. Uh, and the city of Smyrna is divided up into seven wards and we use our pavement evaluation process in conjunction with trying to put at least get at least one uh, project in each ward. And as you can see this year, we're at uh, 4.91 miles. And that's a list there of all the roads that we plan to complete this year. And the final slide is a project that we've just completed, uh, traffic calming on Church Street. 
Uh, the scope of the project was Church Street from Atlanta Road to South Cobb Drive. It included the ins installation of uh, center medians, uh, improvements to the ADA ramps, uh, installation of the uh, RRFBs for improved, improved uh, crosswalk safety, and a uh, resurfacing of the entire roadway. And that, that project has been very well received by the neighborhood. It's been a long time coming, so we were we are very excited to get that completed with the uh, SWAS funds. So with that, that's pretty much where we are in Smyrna. Do you guys have any questions? Thank you. We'll give everybody a few minutes to unmute themselves if they have some questions. Any takers? All right. Well, we are I had a question. Is the Windy Hill Boulevard project the one you're talking about that starts at South Cobb Drive? Yes, ma'am. Goes all the way down, and that's the one that's behind. Because yes, I was going to ask when that was okay. So, 2023. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any further questions for Smyrna? All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, next up, we'll hear from DOT. Good afternoon, and, and thank you for allowing um, DOT to, to skip ahead this cycle. We, we appreciate sure. that. Absolutely. Thank you. So first, I, I just want to talk about the O5 program. We'll be the only ones that you'll hear um, talk about the O5 program because that was really heavy, or mostly all transportation other than a little bit, and um, I think courts had some funding in there. But in the O5 program, we are 99% complete. Um, we are still looking um, at trying to, to finalize that program as quickly as possible. You can go to the next slide. So the only items that are really left in there are the Bob Callen Trail Phase 2 Segment B. Um, we are managing this project or overseeing this project for um, the Cumberland Community Improvement District. And um, that's a project that was identified through them. We're managing um, because there's some state and federal dollars in there. So, so there's that project. And then also um, one of the projects that we have in construction that, that should be wrapped up soon this, um, this summer is the Bellsbury Road Intersection Improvement Project at Turner Road and Dixon Road. So that, that should be completed fairly soon also. Okay. And then um, okay, if you can go to the next slide. Um, so, so these are really the only things that are outstanding in our O5 program. You'll see the two projects that we, we just mentioned, which were um, Bob Callen Trail and the Cumberland CID boundary, and then also our um, intersection improvement at Bells Ferry at Turner Dixon's Roads. Um, we've resolved our utility prior rights claim, so that's outstanding. And we have four projects that still have some right-of-way claims and condemnations or surplus <coughs> surplus properties on. So our goal is still to, to close out that program um, sometime in 2022. Um, out of those active projects, there's just around seven and a half million dollars remaining in the program. Hey, okay, April, if you can go to the next slide. So this is really covering our 2011 program. Um, there were 210 transportation projects listed in that program, and we're 97% complete. Okay. You'll see that um, where we're at in that program, you're in our in our design phase, is really our lower Roswell Road project. Um, Number two is Woodlawn Drive sidewalks, which we're twinning or working together with Lower Roswell Road. That will that should be one um, design contract or construction contract that'll go out for a bit, um, spring of, of 2022. And then also we had some transit funds that were allocated in the 2011 program. And we were to the 2018, we submitted to the Atlanta Regional Commission for some federal dollars for some preliminary engineering work for future um, transfer facilities, um, relocations of our existing facilities. One of those was the Marietta Transfer Center and the other one was the Cumberland Transfer Center. We recently found out that um, there were funds allocated through the Atlanta Regional Commission to match some of the money that we had set aside in the 2011 SPLOSS for, for transit. So those two projects will be moving forward for the preliminary engineering soon. We went to the board over the last couple of, probably last month, um, for a subgrant agreement with the Atlanta Regional Commission to be executed. So those should begin 
um, design soon. Projects that are in the, in the construction phase for the 2011 program, one is a joint project um, with the city of Kennesaw and it's McCullum Parkway sidewalks, um, Ben King to Olympic Lane, and then also a project in um, District 4, which is Riverview Road. And that, that one should be completed, I think it's July 2021. Okay. So this is the, the summary of where we're at in the, in the 2011 program. There's still 14 projects that are somewhere in progress um, or completed, but not completely closed out in that 11 program. Three projects that still have some utility prior rights claims that we're working out with Georgia Power. And right now there's th um, three projects that have right of way claims or condemnation, condemnations associated with those projects. So that's a total of 17 active projects with $40.8 million still remaining in that um, as of May of this year. Our goal is to close that program out by the end of 2024. Thank you. And so now we'll, we'll talk about the 2011 program, uh, 2016 program. I'm so sorry. So there were 275 transportation projects identified in our 16 program. Um, currently, we have 193 of those projects that have been completed. 39, 39 projects that are in a, some form of construction and then 43 that are in, in um, the design or pre-construction phase. Okay. So this is just a map that kind of shows you where those projects that are in design or in construction are located throughout Cobb County. So, and, and again, as of April of this year, DOT has completed 193 of those projects that were identified in the 16 program. Okay, thank you. So I just want to show a few highlights of some of the projects um, that, that we're pretty, pretty happy about. This is um, the um, bridge, L41 Highway Bridge over the CSX Railroad. This is a joint project with the City of Marietta. This one should be completed really soon. Um, the construction amount was $5.48 million and CW Matthews was actually the contractor for this job and it's, it's looking very, very, very nice. Okay. We just mentioned this. This is Riverview Road. This was a safety and operational improvement project um, on Riverview Road between Veterans Memorial Highway and the Smyrna City Limits. Um, we, it was a realignment of the intersection of Riverview Road with Veterans Memorial and had some drainage improvements associated with it. Baldwin Paving is our contractor out there and it is still scheduled for completion. I believe it's due live this year. Okay, thank you. Our next one is a joint project um, that we have with the city of Kennesaw and it's another safety and operational improvement project. Um, the limits for Cherokee Street are between Giles Road and Shiloh Roads and we're at, we added a, a third travel lane eastbound. There's some additional turn lanes. We have some access improvements along the corridor and some pedestrian improvements. The contractor is Lawson Enterprises and it's, it's scheduled for completion this summer also. Okay, so next. Um, the, this project is in District 4. It's um, I-20 eastbound ramps at Riverside Parkway. It's pretty well substantially complete. Um, this was a congestion relief and mobility improvement project. We realigned um, South Services drives with, River, with the Riverside Epicenter Drive. We added a traffic signal, turn lanes, a raised median, and pedestrian improvements. It looks really nice if you get the opportunity to ride, ride out there. We're, we're really proud of this project. Um, and again, it's substantially complete, and C.W. Matthews was our contractor. Hey, April. So our next project is, an, is another joint project that we have with the city of Kennesaw, and it's a uh, McCollum Road, McCollum Parkway at Ben King Road um, roundabout improvement project. So again, this was a safety project. We constructed a roundabout. We added some turn lanes out there. there we realigned Lockhart Drive and included some pedestrian enhancements along that intersection and that, that corridor around in there. Um, a big shanty on McCollum Parkway with some sidewalks. So this was CW Matthews. Um, we're scheduled to be complete with this project this November, and it was it was almost a five million dollar project. Okay. Next is um, some some improvements that we did in District Three. So this is Ebenezer Road sidewalks. Um, we added uh, we added sidewalk along the east side of Ebenezer Road between Hampton Oaks Bend and Mabry's Road. Um, along the south side of Mabry's Road between Ebenezer Road and Quarry Lane. Glossing Enterprises is actually the contractor for this job um, and it should be complete this summer. 
Next, we have an intersection improvement at Factory Shoals at Riverside Parkway. And again, this was another safety and operational project. Um, we added a right turn lane, a signal uh, upgrade, and some pedestrian enhancements at this location. Um, this project was substantially complete this April. Okay. And then we have our Mapleton Parkway pedestrian improvements project. So this is an exciting project also. Um, this is another project that we coordinated with the Atlanta Regional Commission and we're able to leverage um, SPLOS dollars to um, apply for federal funds. We were able to also, because this is a transit corridor, um, utilize those dollars from Federal Highway, we, we call it FLEX, where you move some of those monies from Federal Highway into the Federal Transit Administration so that we could we could leverage um, our dollars for those federal dollars um, because this was a transit corridor and, and, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a corridor that's you know heavily traveled, not only with, with motorists, but our pedestrians. And we wanted to, to have a very nice and safe um, corridor for, for all users along Mableton Parkway. But again, this was a pedestrian improvement project. Um, 2.5 miles is, is this phase of the project. We constructed a 10 foot, are in the process of constructing a 10 foot wide trail on the west side of Mableton, um, and then a five foot wide sidewalk on the east side. There's traffic signal upgrades along the corridor. Um, she has our contractor along the corridor, um, and construction should be complete spring of 2023. And just to talk about resurfacing, um, we we are in the process of, I think we've recently awarded all of our um, resurfacing contracts for 2021. Um, in May of 2021, let's see, we, we had our Georgia DOT LMIG um, thoroughfares contract. This went to the board for approval. C.W. Matthews was awarded that contract and it has 12 rows on that, that contract. Um, we also have been to the board for approval of our local road south contract. Barto Paving was awarded that contract of 66 roads or 13.5 miles of roads. And then also our local roads north contract. The same again, it's 17.1 um, miles of roads. 66 roads um, total and Baldwin Paving was awarded that contract. Okay. And I, I did want to mention the 2022 program. I know we've, we've, we've kind of talked about this a little bit. I just wanted to share the breakdown of, of how the program that, that was approved by the voters really looks for transportation. Um, of course, this, this um, SPLOS renewal will go into effect January 1 of 2022. Um, you know, a, a good portion of the funds will go to asset um, Infrastructure Preservation for, for Cobb County's Transportation Program. Um, so we'll see a lot more um, resurfacing contracts and, and things of that nature when we start presenting in the future. But there are some main projects, um, 11 bridges and culverts that were actually identified and then 10 operational and safety improvement projects. So um, we'll be, I'm sure, uh, gearing up for that program very soon and have, have good information to share in the, the first quarter of 2022. And with that, that should be all. I didn't know if anyone had any questions or thoughts or comments. Erica, or, what will the um, Big Chicken um, Transit Station, can you give us an idea of what it'll look like and is it just going to be a giant parking lot and that's about it? No, our, our, you know, our, our goal for us or, you know, a really high level concept and thought has been that it would be more of a transit, um, like operate like a TOD, some type of transit oriented development. Now, I know that'll be a large and long, a long process and, and it'll take a while to get there. But ultimately, you know, we, we would love to see not only a, a great place for transit for our uh, buses to be able to get on and off of the Northwest Corridor and 75, but then also have development you know, some type of um, um, residential component, multi, you know, multi-use mix over there. So right now, we've, we've done a very, very, very high level layout. Once we um, get the contracts awarded, we'll have the RFPs coming out, we'll have a better idea of what could go on that location. Um, so, you know, right now, I feel like, this, you know, of course, the sky's the limit and we want to have the best use that we can. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Cobb and our in our in our users in the county. So right now we really don't have a, a great idea, but you know, 
we would love to see some type of transit oriented development there. So maybe expect a break ground next year sometime? No, I wish no. it'll, it'll, ta it'll take a while. So this right now, you know, it's, it's a multi-phased um, approach. So we were able to coordinate with the ATL, Sarada Georgia DOT, to actually identify funds for property acquisition. So we have some funding for that, um, but, but there is not enough funding to actually do um, construction of the project yet. So we're, we're having to really strategize on funding opportunities and how to leverage our, our funds that we have in hand, um, any of our SPLAS dollars that, that are available that have been identified and how we can um, find the right federal grants that are that are out there and available for us to apply mm -hmm. for and really try and, and target those and, and try and bring in those federal dollars as we continue to look for other funding opportunities. Okay. Eric, I just... Eric, this is Sally Riddle. My question might kind of dovetail with what you were talking about. Um, has our thinking caps on that if federal infrastructure doc, uh, dollars do pass, I know they're talking about things as far as a focus on bridge repairs, um, things of that type, but what we you know, have might have a wish list to uh, work towards with when those dollars become available? Yes, ma'am. We we always we always try and make sure that that we're we're trying to stay ahead. So we any any projects that we feel like would be good candidates for federal dollars, especially you know we have to treat those a little differently um, because if you don't follow the federal processes processes in the beginning, a lot of times you either have to redo everything that you've done up to that point when you apply for for federal dollars, or you have to um, you know, you, you may have to forego those opportunities. So definitely, um, we know any, anything related to transit, especially, is very expensive. And a lot of times, you know, we want to we want to make sure that that we're following those processes, federal guidelines, federal FTA processes, so that we can line ourselves up for um, those opportunities where we can apply for those federal dollars. Also, kind of the same with any of our um, um, any surface transportation type projects. You know, we want to make sure that, that we're doing the correct environmental processes and right of way processes so that we're not precluding a chance that we could um, potentially apply for those um, grants or, you know, opportunities that may become available. So, so most definitely, and, and we, we do try and, and keep in the back of our minds you know, candidates that we know are going to be, um, or projects that we know are going to be good candidates and, and try and make sure that we're um, working to follow those processes so we're not precluded from eventually applying in the future. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Erica, this is Jay. Hey, that Hi. roundabout there that's at McCollum and Ben King and stuff like that, when that roundabout goes in, does it does the DOT change the the distance from that um, roundabout that you're allowed to put proper, you know, a, a driveway or an entrance into a property? Does that change? Um, we we would still have to look at some of our criteria, like driveway mm -hmm. criteria and and offset. So um, I don't know that it. I'd have to look at if, if there's a specific location that you're looking for, but we do have those. So those types of offset sets that we would try and maintain. You oh yeah, I just place to, to slow anything down out yeah. there. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh -huh. Jackie Benedipore here. I was wondering if you could give us an update on the Waleo Bridge project and um, what kind of work exactly is going to go on there. Sure. Um, let me pull my book out. I have it. I know Way County is to, actually. You want me to help out? Yeah. Yeah. Is actually our program manager with our SWAS program. And any, any very specific questions you have about specific projects, he is definitely going to be better able to answer those. So, Wade, if, if you don't mind helping me with that. Okay. Yeah. So, the William Bridge, we've actually issued notice to proceed to the contractor. Uh, the, there was a major gas line across that bridge that had to be disconnected and it was actually uh the gas was shut off this week so and if you live in the area you've probably seen signs so the road is scheduled to be closed on june the first 
uh, for, for four months. And during that time, basically the entire bridge will be replaced. Uh, it'll be wide, and the new bridge that goes in will be widened and it'll have uh, pedestrian and bike access on both sides. Uh, you know, it is, it is a joint project between uh, Cobb and the city of Roswell. Uh, but you should start seeing a lot of activity out there uh, ne next, right after Memorial Day. So they're, they're, they've started work now under lane closures, but they'll really get going uh, after Memorial Day. And, and there will be a detour in place, obviously, with the roads closed. So uh, it'll basically take you back to State Route 120 and down that way. So you're saying four months to completion is the estimate? Yes. Okay. So yeah, well, the, the bridge the bridge is scheduled to be closed for four months. You know, there could be once the bridge is reopened to traffic, there still could be some work going on. But for for all intents and purposes, the, the you know the bridge work will take four months. And then what's happening on Lower Roswell and Indian Hills Parkway right now? There's some construction going on there. Yeah, yeah that's actually a part of it. the Cobb County Marietta Water Authority is replacing, I think it's a 36 inch main there. And it, it's affecting this area. It's over over in Barnes Mill area. I mean, it's, it's basically cutting across the county, the eastern part of the county. It, if you recall, they did something similar with a 54 inch down the middle of Lower Roswell Road uh, two or three years ago. But it's it's just another. They're actually in the process of replacing all of their you know uh, all of their mains throughout the county. And then you had mentioned there was some uh, DOT work at uh, Lower Roswell that was being combined with sidewalks on Woodlawn. So yeah, so that's a the 2011 splice program. Uh, Lower Roswell Road is between uh, between Davidson Road and uh, I guess it's Woodlawn. Yeah, between Davidson and Woodlawn. So it's been uh, it's kind of been on hold for a while, but it's now back up. We've got the design almost finalized. I think Erica, maybe you can tell the concept is going before the board for approval. Or has it gone, or is it in the next few weeks? I, no, it has not gone yet. I believe it'll probably go sometime okay. in June. Is is my thought? Okay. They'll get. But usually, if we have a, a contract, a construction project that's going to cost over $5 million, we'll, we'll ask the board to approve um, the concept of that project before we move forward with it. So we, um, this, we've this we been working, I think, to design on this project for a few years. Um, we've tried to have some very targeted conversations with some of the, the business community in the area. Um, they, they, we recently had a, a virtual type town hall, not a town hall, but a virtual um, open house town hall where we we had the layout of the of the design and some some information related to the project open for public comment over um, I think it was a few weeks so that's closed out now um, we scheduled some time with Commissioner Richardson to go through all that and then once once we've done that we'll take it to the board for approval after that we'll start um, having conversations with the property owners along the corridor for, for right of way purchase and then once we've um, you know, gotten through right away purchase, we can move to the next phase of advertising for construction. So what you, what exactly is happening to the road redesign? Are you adding lanes or changing the the road the path or? No, it's and I if, if I can send you the link to that website too if you if you like to to actually see the concept and layout. But it's more of an access management type. Um, one of the, you know, that was very definitely one of our higher crash corridors. Um, so we're putting in some median and, and trying to provide some better um, safety um, and operational fixes on, along that section. So, Wade, I, I don't believe there was any, we, we don't have any capacity expansion, right? We're just putting in some, some turn lanes and I believe just the median to, to try and cut down on the um, accidents along that corridor, and then um, there were there were some some pedestrian enhancements like or improvements for some sidewalks um, out there also. But I can I can share that out with the group that the um, where we had the web page set up, and you can you can see a little better, and you can share any feedback or comments that you have. We appreciate that. Okay, thank That's you, Christ. Any other comments or questions for DOT? Hey, good afternoon. This is Lindsay, uh, Erica. Just quick question going back to uh, piggybacking off one of Sally's questions earlier. 
the projects that we've identified uh, for the 2020, uh, specifically around the infrastructure on bridges, do you think that's, is that catching up to projects um, that we've missed on, or is this kind of going to carry us forward into the future or, you know, five years from now, will we be uh, in, a, in a similar situation? So, so okay, so wait, wait, keep me straight. I would say as related to bridges, Cobb County has done a very good job of working to make sure our bridges stay in working order because we, we don't. So Georgia DOT um, actually comes and inspects our bridges every two years. So they give us a report and tells us, you know, what type of shape they're in. We do not want to have a bridge um, come, a report to come back and say, this bridge is going to be load restricted now. And, and, you know, that means we can't have trucks or certain weights on those bridges. So we, we've tried to do a very good job of, of watching those reports and making sure that we keep our bridges in, in very good shape. Now, when you talk about drainage, so our culverts under the roads, um, you know, those are those are hidden gems that we don't know what we're gonna find when we get until we get out there and dig it up or until someone calls and says, hey, there's a big hole that's opened up in the road or a little hole and you get out there and you know, the whole pops washed out. And unfortunately, with our infrastructure and the growth of Cobb County, that's one thing that has um, that 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 we know is going to need a lot of attention um, because a lot of those pots have met their useful life. So we're we're going to definitely have to to I don't want to say play catch up, but really target the drainage and infrastructure in the ground to make sure that you know we're not having. Um, issues in the future we, we just we want to make sure that, that we're really targeting and making sure that, that we're getting those fixed and replaced as quickly as, as possible it's just one of those things you don't know until a lot of times you find out there that there's a problem when somebody calls it in the, the, the other thing i would mention is that resurfacing you know our asphalt our roadway infrastructure um five years is not going to get us to where we need to be overall but it's a good start um one of the things that we're, we're doing right now is we we have um, targeted our, our goal that we set for ourselves was to have all the roads reinspected um, and put together a priority list over the six years of the 2022 program. And so, as citizens call in and say, "Hey, when are you gonna when are you gonna resurface my road? It's been 15 years. I've lived here for 15 years. You, you know, you paved it the year before I got here." Um, we can we can have a very a better answer than we've had in the in the past because in the past we'll say hey you know the last time we inspected it it does warrant resurfacing however you know there are there are many other roads that are unfortunately in worse shape than yours so hopefully we'll have a better idea and can plan out a pro we'll say a, a draft or tentative program of roads that would fit the criteria over that six years to, to really get ourselves in a better position than we are today Wade, did I say that right? Yes, ma'am. Couldn't have said it better. Okay. okay. I didn't want to misspeak. So definitely, it's, it's going to get us better than where we're at, but it's not going to get us where we need to be. I got it. Thank you very much. All right. Any further questions for Erica? Hey, uh, I have a question, Erica. Can you mm -hmm. hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is uh, Felicia. One of the questions that I get from uh, constituents is that there's a, an unincorporated Cobb area, um, hypothetically near the Ridge Road area in District 2, and they they have paving needs. How do we make sure that the what's um, prioritized from uh, Smyrna versus Cobb County doesn't fall along the wayside? And don't, Wayne, we, so I think the Cobb portion is in the contract this year to be yeah. paved. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah. I think about a half the half mile section uh, on the South Cobb end is on, is in this current contract. So it, it'll be paid this summer. Okay. And then one last question. You know, there have been lots of uh, 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 accidents there, and I know at one point we couldn't get a um, a, a we, they couldn't get uh, what is it the um, uh, breakers because of the uh, uh, hospital. What, where where are we on that, and is there an opportunity, or who should we send constituents to to talk about getting breakers on that street going down to the, where the accidents are? Is, is that on Ridge Road or South Cobb Drive? Ridge Road. 
Okay. Are you, are you talking about like speed humps, speed bumps? Or are you, when yes. you say braces? Yes, yes. yes ma'am. Okay. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Um, there, there is board policy on, on when speed, speed, speed humps can be incorporated or installed. So I'll need to look at the road classification for Ridge. So let me do that and, and reach back out to you, Felicia. Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, lots of great information. Anybody else have a question? All right. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Um, next, Madam, we'll hear from... Madam Chair. Yes. I'd be remiss if I didn't let everybody know this is Erica's last meeting with us. Uh, Erica's last day with the county is uh, coming up real soon. We'll thank her for all the work she's done with the with the Citizens Oversight Committee through the years. Uh, she's always been one of our stalwarts, and we're going to miss her. Uh, but our loss is uh, Paulding County's gain. So, <laughs> want to make sure everybody everybody knew that. Well, you have been a wonderful to work with, and we appreciate all that you've done while with Cobb County and wish you all the best. Yep, we will be missed. Well, thank thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, Parks and Rec. Hey everybody, it's Tom Bills here. It's nice to see everyone again. Um, starting off with a few projects that we have left in 2011, um, we've been 99% uh, complete with a number of projects for some time, but there's we're, we're, we're completing a couple that I wanted to show you about here. Next slide, please. So use your imagination a little bit on this one. This is in Lions Park, uh, the upper concession building. Um, earlier, we we, uh, we built a brand new, um, in the program, we built a brand new concession stand uh, at the bottom of the park here. This long building, um, the left side is, is restrooms and some storage. The right side is um, our maintenance room and their old concession, the concession that they used to rely on was in the middle there. Um, so just picture in your mind, um, everything that's in the blue and red outline disappearing um, and having a breezeway, you could be able to, you'll be able to see straight through there. Um, this, the schematic is just below, so you can see there'll be a different kind of a roof line there um, when we're done. We're getting started on this and, and the next slide shows um, what we're going to be replacing. On the left is what's happened in the to that room, uh, that you know their 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 concession that that served them you know before we built a new one um, just became a catch-all and kind of a nasty place and so it's not going to be missed. On the right, um, it shows we had to, the first thing that we've completed here is to move all those electrical boxes from this wall, which would which once we tear down, once we once we open up the middle would be on the exterior. We've moved those to to the other side of the same wall, which will be in an interior. Um, and so um, that's about where we are with this project is having moved those and and, and demolition will start in earnest next week. Um, next time we'll be able to show you some some different pictures of that. Similarly at Harrison Park, um, the upper uh, concession restroom building, the one that's right up by Sandy Plains Road um, at, the, at the very front of the park, we've done some improvements to the outside. You'll see a new roof and and um, and new gutters, bounce spouts that we've done earlier. But inside the restrooms um, still needed some help. So. The, the photo on the right shows the condition of, of the flooring when we started, um, and the porta johns are to hold people over in, in the meantime. Um, the next slide shows on the left and right um, the existing, the, what was the existing floor, um, just painted the lower course of block and the wall was just painted the same color, but it wasn't a, a true uh, um, cove base. Um, old sinks and that sort of thing. On the right is the, is the new, you can see the, the flooring. The next slide will show it a bit better, but you can see the flooring that has an integral cove base um, on the right and the new partitions. Um, this is complete now. I just, I don't like showing, I don't know why, I don't like showing pictures of toilets and urinals and stuff to y'all, so just picture those. Um, but the, you can see where, where the, um, on the left, uh, the, the, in process, the, the, um, the floor is being, they, they get rid of all the old paint, all the old uh, fixtures, and it's, et cetera, and this project is complete now. Next slide. Um, moving into the 2016 SPLOST, um, we're 90% complete with our projects. Um, we have construction underway in 2%, design in 7%, and, and a future project or two um, uh, is 1%. So next one. 
we completed um, Discovery Boulevard, or sorry, the Discovery Park at the Riverline. This park, um, we cut the ribbon last month, and I will tell you that we cut many ribbons last month. There were several groups who wanted to, to have a pair of scissors, and so on the left is the Recreation Board, who were there that day. Luckily, the rain, the, I'm telling you, it rained. I mean, it was serious rain. It, 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 cut, it, let up, it let up just enough for us to cut several ribbons. The Recreation Board is on the left, um, and the Mableton Improvement Coalition is on the right. They're very pleased with, it, with, the, with the project. Um, the next slide shows um, some of the, the, the earthworks that are there and our interpretive signage that's been installed there. Um, we're trying to tell that we're telling the entire story of, of the Civil War earthworks that are there and the people that, that, that built and occupied them. And also it's a nice place to get down close to the river. Um, so there's, we have a, a number of, of sort of nature and wildlife and, and geomorphology and that sort of thing. It's a very informative set of signs that we put together with QR codes that have a massive amount of information that you can, that you can get, you know, dig right down and get to the, some of the details of it. Um, this has been, um, this project, you've seen it, I've seen any pictures of it in the past. Um, it, it's, it's a small area, but it has been incredibly popular. Um, it's, a, it's been embraced by the neighbors and people who drive to the parking lot, et cetera. Um, and uh, we're really, really pleased with the way people are enjoying it. Um, the next slide shows the next phase of this. So this is a, this is a, a DOT led project. Um, our, you can see at the top where it says tr uh, Discovery Trailhead, that is our parking lot. And our, our trail system is um, from the parking lot up to the top of the ridge. But um, the Chattahoochee Riverlands, is a, if you're not aware of it, it's a massive planning uh, project that was undertaken by and funded by Cobb DOT and ARC and uh, the Trust for Public Land and maybe some others that is um, that studied, actively studied uh, access to the river, public access to, this, to the resource of the Chattahoochee River for over 100 miles, four different counties, a lot of different jurisdictions, some private property along it as well. Um, on the north side of the river. Um, this is the pilot site. It, it happens to be at the back side of our, of our park. Um, and so this is the, the first uh, uh, sort of enhancement associated with that massive planning process uh, that is gonna take place and it and has some, in, some um, initial funding through DOT. Uh, and this is the, 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 the concept of, of their plan. Uh, and we'll, you know, it'll, be, it'll become part of our park. Um, it's a it's a hard surface trail that goes along the river bank and a, some boardwalk to get across the wetlands and then a natural surface the dotted line is a is a natural service trail system that that will connect at the bottom of the of the slope where ours is at the top so this is in in design now um you know it's led by dot as i said um but they are um they've welcomed us to the process um because we know a lot about uh, parks here knows a lot about um, building and maintaining natural surface trails and uh, it's going to be ours at the end of the day anyway to maintain so we want to be part of it and they've and they've welcomed us to that process so we appreciate that and, and there's there's a lot of public input to this as well next please um, this is Nesbitt Union Chapel um, we I've, I think I've shown you this in the past um, we've been working with the friends of Nesbitt Union Chapel this is a, a one acre site that is um, located on Potter Springs Road um, just north of County, County Services Parkway. Um, it's right between the trailer repair and the CVS. Um, you can drive by it every day and not even notice that it's there. But on the, on the left is a picture from probably the, the you know, turn of this last century showing what it looked like. Um, on the right is a photograph sometime in between, obviously, where it's fallen into disrepair. The next slide shows um, an, another photograph um, sort of before it became ours and the final in the, in the last slide here shows what it looked like when it moved into our inventory. So by the time it got to us, it was really just one section of wall still standing. It's, you can show you on the right that it's braced there. This slide, I'm oh, sorry, you know, you can go. Um, this slide is a, is a, a the, on the left is a rendering of, of the outline of the chapel that, the, that um, somebody in the friends group um, had, had prepared. But it's useful for, for this purpose to show what we're going to try to do with the, what, what we're going to do with the with the funding we have. Um, the blue outline shows where the ghost framing um, will be. It'll take it'll take on the 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 contours of the front of the building. It'll it'll um, support the the remaining wall that's on the right there. Excuse me. It'll outline the the, um, the first windows, um, the first set of windows. And 
um, it'll go up to the to where the bell is. We actually have the bell, which shows on the right, and it'll be it'll be. Um, uh, we hope to be able to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Call me back. Call me back. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, so the, the as I said, the blue outline shows where the the ghost framing will will cover. And um, the next slide um, shows. So this is. Um, Brought to us by um, your your colleague Barkley Russell, um, for that was on the committee until recently. Um, she arranged for us a, a cleanup crew from the J.E. Dunn Construction Company, and we have um, they have a they had a volunteer project that they wanted to do, and Barkley called us and asked if we had something, and we said yes, we do. And I have to say that that we have the opportunity to work with volunteers on cleanups um, fairly frequently, um, and and we always appreciate it. But this crew came prepared to really work. And that's Barkley there on the right in that orange in the orange with her hard hat. Um, but th this group of, of folks came out and they were they were prepared with equipment and safety gear and chainsaws and and ready to work. And in about four hours they cleared the entire front of the park of anything that was smaller than about um, six inches. Um, and we were there with um, I I did my best to keep up with them. Um, but we were there with our chipper and uh, our, um, one of our guys, AC Jones, ran the chipper. It does not look like an impressive pile that's next to the chipper there in this picture, but I got to tell you that um, there was a very impressive amount of work that got done that day. You can see this now from the road. You couldn't see it before from Powder Springs Road, but now if you, um, you, know, you take your eyes off the road briefly, you would be able to see it and see that, that wall remaining. So I just wanted to give Barclay and J.E. Dunn a shout out because they did a great job. Next slide, please. Okay, um, this is uh, the um, the the Jim Miller Park Arena. One of the pro This is really the only project that COVID um, has gotten in the way of for for the Parks Department. I mean, it slowed down a couple of things, but for the most part, we COVID had an almost no impact on on our SPLOS projects. This is a, the, the lone example, though, where, where it got in the way. Last March, we were, March of 2020, um, we received a, a, a good proposal to replace all the bleachers in the arena. Um, and that was about the same time that the Cobb Douglas um, uh, Public Health Department um, took, uh, um, became our tenants, sort of, and we were delighted to have them there to do testing for COVID. And now they're doing the, um, vaccines in, that, in the building. But because it's, it was occupied by, by, by those folks, um, it, it, enough time passed so that the, the, the firm that had given us the, the quote for the bleacher replacement said, we just can't do it anymore for that price. And we had to let that go. So um, as soon as the, um, the Cobb Douglas uh, Public Health Department is, is, um, will leave the building, we're going to put that, do the procurement again, and we'll, um, we'll be able to do that project again. But this is really the only project that COVID um, sort of truly interrupted, as far as um, as far as our projects go in parks. Tom, what kind of timeline will it take from procurement to finishing the project? Um, it will. Our our goal will be before the next year's fair, before the twenty two North Georgia State Fair. Um, so we'll have them for this year. No, we will not have them for this year. I mean, we'll we'll have the current. Oh, ones yeah, you'll year. get the same old bleachers for this year. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was um, that's the down that's the truly the downside. So I try to look at the bright side and say that a lot of people got tested and 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 vaccinated in, yep. instead. So that's that's a trade we're willing to make. I guess. Agree. <laughs> okay. Um, next slide, please. So um, I've shown you this one in the past, um, mostly from the air. This is at the bottom of Fuller's Park. This is a project that um, was completed a few months ago, and I just wandered over there a couple Sundays ago because I knew there'd be some activity there, and I wanted to show you this. Um, it, 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 I think I said this before to you. Some projects, I mean, every one of our projects we're very proud of, but some of them just make such a change and 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 just it just transforms an, an area of a park that everyone's sort of gotten used to. This is one of those, and. Uh, this is a project that was, um, it's a joint use with the Cobb County um, School District um, because they use they used this field for, for their youth football and sort of feeder uh, uh, teams for lacrosse. 
this entire area is now turf. So the brown that you see in the infield um, and behind home plate, that's all turf. It's just a different color and slightly, slightly shorter. Um, but um, this, we are having a hard time keeping up with the with the the reservations for this because um, you can do several things at once on this field, and it's just terrific. Um, so we're going to do the same the same sort of thing, um, and the next slide shows uh, at Terrell Mill Park. So um, Walton High School, um, when they're when they made their improvements to their high school, they um, had to get rid of the area that that housed their um, girls softball field and and their uh, concession and such. So they've been using Terrell Mill Fields three and four, the ones on the right, for their um, for their um, softball practices and practices and games. So we're going to do um, the same thing here and do as much turf conversion of these um, these four fields as we can as our budget will allow. So um, we're certain to be able to. It's in design now um, with breed level land planning. Um, we're certain to be able to to do turf um, on completely on fields three and four. LED lights on existing poles throughout the park, all these fields, um, fencing throughout the park on all these fields, and then with whatever money is left over, and we'll be able to, we'll get a very good sense of that when the designs are done um, in the next month or so, um, we'll be able to do it, hopefully anyway, do is at least the infields on fields one and two, which are primarily um, suitable for and used by um, adults uh, softball. Um, the outfields are used for cricket and for ultimate frisbee, that sort of thing. Um, but we're going to do as best we can to to install um, synthetic turf here um, on 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 the other two fields. But you know, completely on, on three and four, and as much as we can can manage on fields one and two with lights and and, and uh, new fencing throughout. Um, the soccer field that's at the bottom there that's that's one that you that uh, has already been converted. Um, it, it's used for soccer, lacrosse, ultimate frisbee. Um, again, um, the turf just it just opens up so many more possibilities for us and gets us 10 something like 10 to 12 additional weeks per year of use because you don't have to take it out of service after a big storm it just drains immediately it drains almost immediately and you can get right back on it without tearing it up so um we're our our, our associations are are and our, and our department are very much enjoying these turf fields next slide please so these are the additional projects um, coming up for 16. Um, Old Clarkdale, we received bids a uh, week ago today. Um, we're, we're looking at those. We got um, six, uh, six bids from very um, good contractors. We're very pleased with the way they came in. We're looking at um, budgets and alternates and that sort of thing right now. Um, we also, um, in a separate project, um, have an architect on board to design the, the community center building, be much smaller than the one that, that, uh, that we're replacing. Um, but that's a, that'll be a separate project. Um, Violet Stub Park uh, design and engineering is at the 90% complete stage. Um, so we'll be you'll be hearing more about that soon. Um, our general park improvements. Um, I don't have anything to show you this time, but um, I, in the past we've been able to do lots of, of work on utilities, roofs, lighting, and plumbing throughout our park system. Um, Jim Miller Park I spoke about before. Um, we have we're uh, and I've shown you before some of our some of our wayfinding and, and entrance uh, sign um, sign uh, package that we're that we're going to follow from now on. Um, so we're that's the, one of the first full fledged wayfinding uh, uh, projects we're going to do, and that that'll be um, put together. Um, we have a good bid, and we're going to put together that uh, that project in the next couple months. Um, back to Miller or back to the arena. Um, the sound attenuation and lighting upgrades are are underway. And planning, and then the bleachers. Um, as I said, we're going to um, start again with with procurement. And next slide, please. As Erica, um, as Erica did, I wanted to show you um, a little uh, preview of the 22 program for parks. Um, every one of these these lines has um, specific parks behind it, but these are the categories of work that we're going to be doing that were separately um, called out in the in the um, in the book and the ballot. So we have technology, building renovations. Again, more synthetic turf. A lot of that is, some of that anyway, will be replacement of the, thinking ahead, replacement of the turf conversions that we did earlier in the 16 program. So at Mud Creek, the field I just showed you at, uh, at Terrell Mill and at Hubert, um, sometime between now and, and 2028, when the 22 SPLOS is done, we'll, have, we'll, we'll pretty much certain that we'll have to re um, repair or replace that turf. So that's, that's covered in this as well as some additional new conversions. 
um, electrical and lighting upgrades. That's primarily going to be LED lights on our on our fields and, co and courts, um, mechanical systems. So HVAC in our in our uh, rec centers and and um, and uh, aquatic centers, that sort of thing. Paving always need paving. Um, amenities, um, erosion and stuff. We have a lot of dams and lakes that that, are, that we're anticipating um, improving subsurface infrastructure. So that in, that includes water and 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 uh, stormwater that sort of thing. And then um, we wanted to be able to deploy our new signs, um, our new park signage elsewhere and other places. So we're going to, um, you'll see a lot of new signage coming around in that last category. So that all totals up for parks to $24 million. And the next slide shows um, the, uh, the parks uh, allocations from the each district commissioner's community impact project. So they had some, the, each, each district commissioner has discretion over um, an $8 million um, sum. And if you'll look at it, um, we got all of two of them, all 8 million for districts two and three, most of it for district one, and a good chunk of it for district four. So we get an additional parks, um, gets an additional um, 28, just over $28 million um, in discretionary funds under community, the community impact projects. And so we interpret that, um, A, we, 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 we we take pride in that um, because it, it's clear that uh, that their constituents feel um, very strongly about about parks and what we do, and we're um, very humbled by it. Um, and are going to just we're going to do a great job with the money they've entrusted us with. So, so the total parks allocation in the 22 spots is is over 52 million dollars. So we're pretty um, we're pretty pleased with that, and we appreciate um, that our commissioners uh, did that for us. Any questions? All right, thank you for that, Tom. Any questions you'd like to ask about parks? So the, um, this is Jackie Benedipore again. The TRIP property acquisition, um, so that property is still in private hands, I take it. And um, when when will that be purchased by Parks and Rec? Any, any projections on that? Well, let me, uh, there's, yes. Um, I don't have a projection. Um, I don't want to make a projection. But we, um, Mrs. Tritt had um, a total of just of just over 50 acres, and the 2008 Parks bond um, was able to. We were able to buy about about um, about 28 acres of that. So we already the, the county already owns uh, 28 acres of that. Um, part of the agreement, however, was that we weren't going to um, do make any improvements on that while she was still living in the home. Um, as a, another part of the purchase agreement uh, with Mrs. Tripp was that the county would have an option on the remaining 20 acres, which is that if, if you're when you're driving by, it's it's um, it's part about two thirds of the field you see out in front in her house, and then the woods and, and hill behind. So the the eight million dollars that Commissioner Ott at the time dedicated uh, is for um, it would be the lion's share of the funding that would be required to to purchase the rest of it. And the county, as I said, has an option when she um, when she comes to the point of, of deciding to sell it. Um, and we wish her all the greatest health uh, in the, in, in, um, because she's such a sweet person and did this for us. Um, so um, I can't say when that's going to be. I hope she lives many years longer. But it'll be, um, you know, the, we, that money will be is set aside um, for that purpose. To buy, to purchase the home and the the, the remaining, property in the front of the house and behind, right? The remaining twenty acres. Okay, okay. So, and then is there are there plans for uh, that that will all be folded into East Cobb Park, I assume. Well, um, yes, and and so that backs up to Fuller's Park too. So I mean, it's a it's a it's a, a an incredibly will be an incredibly. Um, uh, just a great, um, the center of East Cobb basically will have both active and passive um, park amenity there um, that's even better than it is now. Now we're, we're not drawing a lot of attention to it because, um, I mean, it's public property and you're, and people are free to walk on it, but we're not inviting them or do, we haven't done a master plan on it yet but, um, because, um, you know, um, we don't want people to show up in her backyard. Um, and that's what, that's what she wished for and we're going to do our part to, to, um, to, to honor that. Thanks. So um, it, it, it will probably have a different name. Um, it'll probably, it'll, it'll, we will, um, so it won't all be called East Cobb Park. Um, it'll have her name associated with it somehow. That's to be determined. 
Thank you. Um, um, a while back, there was some discussion about uh, uh, license plate readers at uh, park entrances. Uh, is there ever been any movement on that? Yes, we've installed um, we've installed them in um, a couple dozen parks, and uh, um, they've been uh, they've been used. They, they've helped out quite a bit. Um, now we don't we're not privy to um, to the to the um, any I don't have any particular examples where that's helped to solve a crime or helped to to do anything like that because the feed goes to um, public safety. We don't we don't uh, um, have access to that unless we you know specifically ask for it. Um, but uh, but yeah, those have already been installed and and um, seem to be doing what we hope they would. Okay, thanks, Tom. Any other questions before he goes, Madam Chair? If you if you don't if you don't mind, um, with your permission, I'd like to make a personal statement. Sure. So. Um, this will be my last uh, presentation to y'all. Um, I'm retiring. Um, I will retire before uh, from Parks Department before our next meeting, where I'm on the uh, where I'd be on the on the agenda where we're on the agenda. So I just wanted to say that um, it's always a pleasure to to, to see y'all and to to um, be able to tell our story. And as a taxpayer, I I truly appreciate um, what you all do and how seriously you take this and um, keep track of keep track of all of our money because it's important. And uh, I really appreciate it, and I wish you all the best, and uh, I'll miss you. Well, we will definitely miss you, and um, you've always done an excellent job of keeping us up to date, and just know that we appreciate you. All right, thank you. It's always fun to talk about. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. Um, you're welcome, um, and good luck with, with your next chapter. Okay, thank you. Um, anything further for Tom before we move on? All right. Um, under other business, I wanted to let you know that our meeting in July, we will go back to in person meetings, and the location is to be determined, but I'm hopeful that we can get um, into the Schweitzer Library. But we will send out information regarding that as, as we get it. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I had meant to ask um, Erica about the CTP. Is she still I, I have some information on the CTP, Alice, if I can put okay. that up. Sure. Okay, so great. we have three upcoming town halls and CTP meetings. Uh, there is one tonight at Lost Mountain Park. It is also a town hall with Commissioner Gambrill. It is from 5.30 to 8. There is another CTP slash town hall meeting. It's before the BOC on the 25th from 4.30 to 6.30. It's in the Learning Center. And the last one will be on the 27th. It'll be at East Cobb Park with Commissioner Richardson. And that is from 5 to 8. We are also asking if you all could push out the CTP survey, and that can be found at cobforward.org. And I'll also send all of this to the committee in an email after our meeting. Um, but we will have DOT staff there. There will be other staff to kind of just do an overview to the public um, in addition to the commissioner town halls. Um, but we definitely want to try to get some citizens out to take the survey and to just hear back so we could really use your help with getting um, the survey and the constituents to come out. Great. Um, is a, a survey question. that's online, is it um, the same than like what you would hear in the meeting? Are they duplicate? So or? unfortunately I had to pull it up on my phone right next to me. So uh, let's see. So there's there's two major categories that they want to um, really push is the surface transportation and transit. And it says the surface, the survey will focus on proposed projects and possible local funding opportunities. Uh -huh. The first set of questions will focus on surface transportation prog projects. And the second will focus on the transit system. 
And the third step is just getting the citizen interest in exploring new local funding options. So the survey is, it's in addition to what will be there, the handouts and the boards, like a normal CTP meetings, um, but it won't be directly what you would get from in person. Okay. Thank you so much for that update. April, I had a question, if I could ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, I know you just mentioned citizens for the survey. Is this only open to citizens or is it open to like somebody who works or has a business in Cobb County? Any Anyone can take it. The survey is open to anyone. We've been okay. the survey at DOT. We're sending out to other departments. Anyone is able to uh, take part in the, in the survey. Okay, thank you. I'll share that out. All right, and then there was um, an invitation sent out, I believe it was today, about a ribbon cutting on Monday. Um, if you did not receive that, if you could reach out to April uh, for details for that. And if there's no other business, we are adjourned. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in two months.